On today's episode of Backyard Podcast, we got my bro, Khalil Shabazz. His basketball story is one of a kind, as he is now a D1 Hooper at the University of San Francisco. But during this episode, we get to talk about his upbringing in Seattle and how the hoop culture continues to thrive in that community, while also talking about his other profession, which is music. Enough talking on my end, though. You guys are in for a special one. Enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls all over the world, welcome back to another episode of the Backyard Podcast. I'm your host, Marcellus Howard, and we're here with a special guest today. I'm going to say his name first and then give you his resume after. <laughs> Goes by the name of Khalil Shabazz. 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 I, I, we literally just talked about it before we got on freaking camera. <laughs> Shabazz. Yes, sir. Yes. Um, rap name. Lil Bazzy. Lil Bazzy. D1 athlete. Basketball extraordinaire. March Madness att- attendee, a, play, a player. A play, you played in the March Madness. See. So what would that word be? Uh, March Madness, uh, play ye, play ye, yeah. play ye, play ye. Yep. right? Um, before I say this next part of his resume, instant fades needed. Man, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how we do it. First one, don't waste no time. She kind of hurt right now. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, also, he owns his own. <laughs> he owns his own clothing brand, which he has on right now. I don't know if you, you you can stand up and if you want to show them or got the, you know what I mean come on now little eyeball shorts talk got about it eyeball tat hey now right there in the same spot you know you got eyeball over here love it more shorts on the way come on yeah you know I mean so shoot since we already talking about that I wanted to just briefly discuss where'd you come up with the brand eyeball man uh, it started back in high school okay my sophomore year um, I don't know just kind of trying to find your identity yeah. Um, Honestly, I gave myself the nickname, and then everybody just started calling me Eyeball, and I was like, man, I'm going to just put on some clothes, yeah. you know, just kind of see what happens. I made some shirts and, you know, gave them to all the homies, stuff like that, and then after that, I was just like, maybe I could actually, like, do something with it, you know? Um, and then once I got to college, I finally started to get, like, a little bit of money, starting yep. to be able to just create different designs, um, put it on different parts of clothing, uh, and I've been doing the shorts lately, so everybody's been liking them. And it's been going crazy. I like it, man. That's that's the innovation process of being a creator, um, like owning something too. So like you get to say, like, I own my own brand. Exactly. It's like one of the most amazing things because you can control when you want to drop whatever you want to drop, the exactly. color schemes and everything. There's no politics in that. Um, but I kind of want to dive into a little bit of background. When I met you in Seattle, yep. so you're from Seattle. Yes, sir. Born and raised. Um, a lot of people from Seattle, my my college teammates from Seattle, they say "come on," "come on," without the "n." Come on. So, like, what what is what is "come on"? It's just I don't even know. I got it from one of my older homies. Uh, his name's Asia. Okay. Um, and he just is just something we just say, just "come on." Just like if you're agreeing with some, yeah. If you think something's filthy or whatever, it's just filthy. Like wow, you super Seattle. It's filthy. Oh, whatever, filthy. You know. You sound like Jules. Oh my <laughs> gosh, my tall teammate. I'm talking about Jules Sanders. You know, you know Jules, right? Yeah, yeah. me and Jules grew up together. So the the come on, he will always shake my hand like this. Yo, come on. I'm like, what? What are we turning up? <laughs> he would <laughs> turn his finger. I'm like, what? What's going on? What are we doing? Man, it's just it's I don't know, bro. I just grew up doing it. I guess it's a Seattle handshake. I don't know, but honestly, I went to New York. Mm-hmm. Um. My freshman year, we went to uh, the Dick's National Championship. Okay. Was Rainier Beach. Okay. Um, bro, we're walking down the street, and we seen some New York dudes do it. I'm like, what? This is like. Do the, what, the handshake? Yes, yeah, the same handshake that we do. Yeah, it's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, I don't, I'm not saying it started in Seattle. I'm not saying any of that, but I've only done it in, in Seattle until mm-hmm. I went to New York and seen them doing it. I was like, damn, that's crazy. That's crazy, because that's two total different sides of the country. Literally. That's wild. It's wild, but like every everybody in Seattle, you can walk into a random dude and he'll know the handshake. It's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. That's facts. I remember we were in the clubs. Everybody knew the whole thing. Everybody, oh, all that's, of us. That's insane. It's like something you have to know. It's either you have like it's so that's like the initiation of if you're in Seattle, you have to know that, or else you're like you're. What's the what's the equivalent? You're like in basketball. If you don't do it like a right hand, left hand layup, your cheeks. Yeah, yeah. So if you don't know the handshake, like you like yo, who is it? whose man's is this? Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. I honestly think it started on some gang stuff. Honestly. <laughs> I, 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 think, I can see it happening, though. You know? Definitely. 
it's more so now, like it's not nothing too serious. So yeah, yeah, everybody in Seattle do it. Man, speaking of Seattle, um, I know the hoop culture there is really different. I got to experience it for three days working out with IT, you, Marquise, Will Conroy. Yep, yep. Um, who else is there? Spencer Hawes. Yep. Uh, I think Noah Noah Dickerson was there. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to think who else was there. I think that's about it. Will son. Will's goodness gracious. <laughs> well, yeah, we'll talk about that right after you answer this question. What is the hoop culture out there like? I feel like I've tell people all the time it's one of the most genuine and uplifting places to play basketball at because everybody's always supporting each other. Literally, literally, bro. Like, it's crazy. Like, I didn't really understand it until like or underst- like, understand it until I got like out here and like got a little older, mm-hmm. gone to different places and see how like a lot of the NBA dudes don't you know mess with the younger guys or like come back and try to help. Facts. Like. I never took it for granted, but, like, I really understood, like, how much it affects us. You know, mm-hmm. like, guys like DeJounte Murray having um, Jamal Crawford as a mentor, you know, growing up. Right. Easily could have run down the wrong path. But having Jamal in his life, you know, just help him steer the right way. Um, just guys like Paulo. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, we got so many guys, man. Kevin Porter. Mm-hmm. And I'm just naming guys that are closer to my age. Um, it's crazy, bro. We all IT. Like, we can call <laughs> IT. Hey, bro, woo, woo, woo. when's the next hoop session? Or, hey, bro, can you help me with this? Whatever. Yeah. It's crazy, bro. Like, you could do that with all the pros there. Yeah. Hey, Robinson, he's, like, the, the pro that I'm closest to the most. Mm-hmm. Um, I could literally call him and joke about anything, talk yeah. about anything, and yeah. he'll have a full-fledged conversation with me for hours. So, yeah. like, just having that type of connection, it just makes you, you know, believe that you can make it to that level. And then when it's your turn, you got to come back and do the same thing, so... So it's like it's like kind of like paying it forward for every generation. Absolutely. Because one thing about California basketball, I've gone on record to say this. I still feel we we have the most skilled players, mm-hmm. but we don't we don't shed too much knowledge to the youth. Yeah. Like a lot of people will shed that knowledge into their AAU teams, the organizations that they own, but they're not doing it for any and everybody. With Seattle, I go out there and you guys welcome me with open arms. After the workout, Will's like, yo, pull up to the uh, program, like, the 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 crossover. He's like, I'm putting you on a team. You play. I was like, wait. I was like, damn, that's all. That's off That's off the strength. Literally. Right? I never made it back up there because, you know, saying busy, I'm, I got busy. <laughs> I, I got to pay these bills. But um, I would love to go back out there and eventually play in that. But it was just the aspect of there was no egos in the gym. Never. Zero ego in the gym. Um, it was – I've never experienced a workout – where everybody's encouraging everybody the whole way through. Yeah. I usually might start off that way, but from zero minutes to the second hour, everybody was clapping each other. We're, up, we're missing shots. You know, get the next one, killer. Yada yada, and, and it's just like you're hearing positive affirmations. Literally, the whole and time. I can only imagine for kids hearing that because little Will's working out with pros. He's getting that same love. So when he becomes 15, 16, 17, it's going to be really scary. Yeah, it's going to be man. It's going to be really scary for people out there. He's he's 11. I think he's 11 now. Yeah, because that was a year ago when I went out there. He was 10. Yeah. So, and he has more skill than college guys. Easy. NBA dudes. <laughs> it's crazy, bro. Like, bro. not to say he's better than them, but he has more skill. Like, oh, yeah. an 11-year-old kid should not know how to hezzy tween, snatch, go to the whole one step. You're like, come on. That's crazy, bro. Shoot NBA range, come like, on, bro. easily. I told the story when I walked into the gym. The first thing I see is little Will mm-hmm. <laughs> having an a NBA three shootout with Spencer Hawes. Yeah, I crazy. said, wait, I said, who is this little dude? <laughs> and he comes over. He's like, yo, I watch your videos. I said, wait, who is this guy? And then Will's like, yeah, that's my son. I was like, wow. Yeah. So the the culture out there is is second to none, and I feel like it's helped people like the Apollos, yep. the because it had Nate Rob, yeah, right, and then Nate Rob had. Uh, he was playing with the Stewart twins out there. Yep. And then Jamal Crawford was a forward end. It was just like, it's, it's such a trickle down effect. Isn't it Zach Levine? Yep. So, from Seattle, too. I mean, dang, like a lot of, there's a lot of good hoopers everywhere. But culture, I feel like, is the most important part of basketball. For sure. And for you, you went to Rainer Beach, yep. right? You Did you play for Seattle Rotary? Yep. I was on the EYVL team. So, what, what was your high school graduating class? My high school graduating class or that? that well, you, no, team? what year did you graduate high school? 17, class of 2017. Okay, 2017. Um, so you, your freshman year at Rainer Beach. Yeah. DeJounte was still there? DeJounte. We had David Crisp. David Crisp, DC, shout out my boy. 
Yeah. That's who was there. Who was the dude? I wanted to ask you this because I have a story. Who was the guy that wears the headband? Skinny, my brother. skinny. No, 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 no. Not your older brother. He, he, like a. He's. I think he's my class, 2014. Mm-hmm. Real skinny, wears a headband, but he's skinny, wears long sleeve. It wasn't. It's not your brother. I know who you're talking about. How tall is he? Damn, about your height. Skinny, lengthy. Play on Seattle Rotary. Oh, you're talking about Naeem. Naeem Ladd. Naeem Ladd. That sounds so familiar. He, uh, uh, Babyface? Yep. So he played in Seattle Rotary with, uh, you had a big fella, a big light-skinned fella. Elijah Foster. Yeah, Elijah Foster. Yep. Um, who else you have on there? Yeah, Shaquan. Shaquan. Shit, shout out, shout out my boy Shaq, baby. Come on. I'll be, be cooking him in the workouts, man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but there's a, uh, I had the story when I was in, um, I think it was the seventh or eighth grade. We're in L.A. playing at this tournament. And we're playing Seattle Rotary. Mm-hmm. We only had five players at the time because half of our players' flights was until the next morning. It was really weird. I don't know how we had only five players. But we're playing them. And I just remember him because he would talk the most trash. Yeah. I said, ah, I hate him, but I love it. <laughs> and we got 30 popped. Back Ooh. then, I wasn't that good at basketball. 30? I was, yeah, yeah, 30 ball. Ooh. Yeah. I wasn't, listen. Listen, I was just coming into my basketball body. I was a baseball player. So <laughs> I was just getting into the thick of things. And 30 popped us. But I'd never forget him because he would always talk trash. And I saw him on DeJounte, De- DeJounte Murray's mixtapes. So I said, oh, he, he's, he plays for Rainer Beach. Yeah. But he's actually, he, he's a solid basketball player. No, he's nice, bro. He got one of the coldest floaters yes. ever. Yes. Like, it's crazy. Yeah. He's shorter than me. He's way shorter than me, like two, three inches. So were you, were you 5'11 or six foot? Like right now? Yeah. Like 5'11", 6 foot. Like right in the middle. He's like 5'8". He my height? Yeah. Floater. Yeah. Floater guy. And his whole family, like a lot of people don't know, like his family's like big in Seattle. The lads. Mm-hmm. Like his grandfather was like da- like almost a dad for Jamal Crawford. Wow. Yeah, like a father figure type. It's crazy. It, like if you say lad, Mike, like Mike Ladd, he played at, uh, he was at Fresno. Yeah. He went crazy. He played with Paul George. He's nice. He could have went to the league. Um, oh, uh, uh, at Fresno State? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, he was at Fresno. Um, he was at Wazoo, too. Okay. So um, if you name him, any of the lads, like, they all hoop. A lot of them went places. A lot of them didn't get a chance to. But if you say lad in Seattle, everybody's going to know exactly who you're talking so about. So if I, if, if I name drop, if, if, if I go to, um, let's see, Seattle Storm game, yes. I, say, I know Mike Ladd. I'm getting front row. If you say Mike Ladd, they're going to be like, Oh yeah, we know Mike Ladd for sure. Like it's good money. And then I'm I'm, I'm straight to the dough. Yeah, no ticket. Probably. I'm, 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 I'm sure you trying to go try that? <laughs> <laughs> you trying to go try? Uh, but more in the high school scene, you guys were a really powerhouse team in Seattle. Yeah. And we played one team from Seattle who was number two in the in the state of Washington mm-hmm. behind Rainer Beach. We played them at the Max Preps Holiday Classic. I forget their name, but they're like black and green. They're a team full of white guys. Oh, so and that's probably from the sticks. Probably literally. The side, yeah. But they could shoot the skin off that ball. Mm-hmm. So I said, man, if they number two, I was like, what number one look like? <laughs> so you guys being number one in the city, in the state, kind of like almost every year, what what was that like? What was that like? Was it pressure? Was it like, yeah, we like that anyways. We like to have a target on our back. Everybody wants to beat Rainer Beach. Yeah. What was that feeling like? Man, I mean... For me, it was just like, I wouldn't say there's no pressure, but like we definitely had to perform. You know, we for had sure. we had sold out crowds, people like trying to like uh, sell fake tickets to get in our games. Like they were the they were out there scamming tickets. Yes, nah, that's crazy, bro. Because it got to a point where it was so bad they had to start selling tickets. Usually, you go to a high school game, you pay at the door. Oh, but that's then, facts, facts. When we would play like Garfield and have like hood classes and shit like yeah. that, like it would be bad. Oh, can we cuss on you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, when it was getting like that, like they had to start selling tickets like ahead of time. Mm-hmm. And once they sold out of tickets, people were making fake tickets, selling them outside, selling them on Facebook. Crazy. We so people to- buy the fake ticket and couldn't get in. Couldn't get in. <laughs> it was sad. <laughs> It'd be like $20 or whatever, but yeah. like, be sad. We had police escorts, like all type of stuff. Like it was hectic, bro. Like we had to perform. We had all them people coming out. We had mm-hmm. to put on a show. We had to have dunks, threes, people getting mixed, all type of shit. So. I wouldn't say it's not like nothing like pressure, like oh, like, but it's just like I don't know. We walk with that swagger, so it was yeah. good. Like, it wasn't nothing to us. So y'all was young celebrities getting police escorts and all that. Yeah, I wait. That's hard body. Yeah, 
when when did you start getting more of um more love playing at Rainer Beach in terms of like playing time, getting the rock in your hands? Uh, so when I first got there, like that that freshman year, when we went to uh, Dixon stuff, we went thirty and one, Gosh. and we didn't lose till we played Finley Prep in New York, where they had five NBA players starting on our team. But um, who was on that team that year on Finley? They had um, they had Rashad Bond. They had uh, Kelly Oubre. Oh, your freshman year was 2014 then? Yeah. So that Okay, that was my senior year. Okay. Yeah, yeah so. Damn, Kelly Oubre, Rashad Vaughn. Mm-hmm. I think Alonzo Trier was on that team. Alonzo Trier, yep. Uh, was Derek was Thornton on there? Derek Thornton. Oh, no, no, I think he was I think he was 13. Yeah, no, no, Derek Thornton was, I think, 15. I think he might have came a year after. Okay. Um, I forget who else they had, but they just, it was nice, bro. Yeah. And we didn't really show up to play, like. We, we could have played way better. You played on the national scale, like on ESPN. Uh, yeah, we did. I didn't play though. I was on the. I was clapping. Hey, but you were there. Hey, you know come saying? on. Hey, hey, come on. You was there. You was there though. <laughs> I was on. So I, that year, I was on JV the whole year. Okay. They, I would just swing up, and we went on trips and stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. uh, my JV team was the best JV team ever. In history. History, history for sure. It was nasty. We might, went twenty four and zero. Might be debatable. I don't know. Never lost. Yeah, might be debatable on that one. We were nice. I know. I, I know JV team is pretty good. Who's that? Sacramento Kings. <laughs> <laughs> If we played the Kings, we would have lost by like fifteen. <laughs> we lost by fifteen. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. My bad. I had to that there. It's like nah, but um, yeah. So uh, and then sophomore year, which was my brother and Dejounte senior year, mm-hmm. um, he was going crazy. They was going crazy that year. It was it was wild. Yeah. But um, I was on varsity, and then uh, I was starting at first because our other point guard Ivy Smith, he's from Tacoma. Okay. Um. He was, like, ineligible because he transferred for, like, the first six games or so. Mm-hmm. Um, so I started, and then when he came back, I went back to the bench. Uh, I was six men off the bench. Played all right. But I didn't really start stepping into the, like, spotlight until my junior year. Mm-hmm. That's when I was starting playing guard, you know, playing however many minutes a game. And then we won state that year. Wow. So, yeah. And that team was nice, too. So that team, your junior year, twenty. this is 2016. 2016. So you guys won state. Yep. Did you guys win state all four years you were there? Nah, we went to state all four years. Like, going to state, like, is the norm. Yeah. Like, we make the state every year. So, if we don't, it's like a, a bomb just dropped. Yeah. Um, We usually went state. So, my, my freshman year, we had just finished a three-peat. We had yeah. one three in a row. Then we lost my sophomore year with DeJounte and my brother. Okay. Then my junior year came back one. That year, we had uh, Keith Smith. Mm-hmm. He went to uh, Oregon out of high school and then transferred to Pepperdine. Okay. We had Sam Cunliffe. Um, end up going to Arizona State, Kansas, and then Evansville plays for the I think the Bucks G League team right now. Okay. Uh me, we had this dude named Nikhil Nelson. He was pretty good. Um, and then Kevin Porter. Kevin Porter's on your team your junior year. Ever since my sophomore year, he was on my team every year. Oh wow. Because he's okay. a year younger than me. So that so that so that viral clip of KP breaking the press and then we dunked on bro. Oh, that was that was until I got to college. That oh, was so you, year. damn. Okay, okay. I was yeah, like, yeah, I, yeah. I thought you witnessed that. Yeah, no, that would have been crazy. So, you guys won state. So you, so you won state two years. I won state two years. Yeah, me and my brother hold the record in uh, Seattle for most state championships between a family. So what, he, 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 damn, I goodness, got three, right? I got two. Do you have the rings? I have one of the rings. We were supposed to sell the three P ring. They was just going to get us a ring that had three peat on it because they mm-hmm. got the first one. They didn't get the second one. They were supposed to get the three peat one. Mm-hmm. Still waiting for it. Hey man, hey, hey what's up, man? I'm saying, can we can we get my boy the ring? Hey, Maul. so 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 I can wear it. Come on, Jamal. I need the ring. I need the three peat ring. Yeah, Jamal usually pays for it. Well, that's and, love right there. Oh, yeah. oh man, yeah. still waiting, but you know, it's all love. So, also in high school, so you say you play for in in EYBL, uh-huh. right? So you play on the circuit. Yeah. Two two questions for you. First one, who was the hardest player you had to guard on the circuit? That's a good one. Um, I know you played against a lot of guys. Man, it wasn't really nobody where I was like, ooh. I didn't guard them. But I can name two players that really gave us work. Okay. And I was like, yeah, they to the league for sure. Mm-hmm. DeAndre Aiden. Goodness gracious. Boy was shooting threes and midi gods and he's seven feet, face, bro. Dunking everything, I'm like, okay. 
He's league for sure. Ended up going number one. Yep. And then Gary Trent <sighs> gave us 40. Woo. Played for Howard Pulley. Woo. One thing about Gary Trent, to elaborate on that story, I was at Summer League watching my boy DJ Wilson play, mm-hmm. and they're playing the Trailblazers. No. Wait. What other team is he's on Trailblazers? Trailblazers. Gary Trent? I think he got... I think he's starting on Trailblazers. He's on Trailblazers and he's, on the, he's into the Raptors. Yeah. So he's on the uh, Summer League team. And we're sitting there, sitting there watching, and I kid you not, he had 40. Mm-hmm. But it was a loud 40. Yeah. It was a boom. <laughs> shh, shh, boom. Like, And he was talking. I was like, oh, man. I was like, he's going to be really good this season. Come to find out, signs a contract, goes to Toronto. But when I seen that, I was like, Kids like that, or not kids, men like that don't just get good overnight. No, for sure. So that you saying that kind of validated, oh, so he's been like that. Bro, and I think he went to Duke. Yes. Gosh. Okay, continue. He's a legit bucket, bro. Like, Yeah. There's some dudes that you see on the circuit or see in the league or see in college where you're like, he's, all right. he's not really like that. Mm-hmm. But like seeing it firsthand, I'm like, hey, bro, good game, bro. Good <laughs> shit, bro. Good your shit, good shit. But yeah, no, nah, I would say those are the two most like standout players that yeah. I remember for me. What was the matchup that you you looked forward to though? Like you were like, I want this matchup because it, it might it might have been a guard in your class, in at your position. Man, there's a lot of guards. Like my class was crazy. I ain't gonna lie, but mm-hmm. there's a lot of teams that we didn't get to play. You know, because you play like your certain amount of uh, That's right. games in your when you go to your sessions. That's right. Um, but like we had like Trey Young on our. He was in a session. Wow. Uh, never got to play him. And speaking of Trey Young, he's going to Seattle tonight to play in Pro- the Pro-Am. Pro-Am? Yep. He has to redeem himself. He has to redeem because I guess the Drew Lee, they yeah, said. Yeah, I heard it was Boo Boo. Yeah. Him and John Collins. John Collins, my boy JC, you know, we're going to call a spade a spade. First NBA player to foul out. I've seen that. In he a got Drew punched game. on. He did get punched on. i seen I, that. You know, <laughs> hey, <laughs> look, look, Trey Young didn't have a bag and he had 22 points. But I think what what ruined that was Braun had a light forty right before that. Yeah. So they exactly. came there and dropped thirty something to combined. Exactly. And lost. And not to mention like a guy like like a player like Trey like he can't have twenty two in a pro am. No, not in a pro am. Yeah, you know I mean like that's that's a, that's a, that's a cakewalk in the league for him. That's what I'm saying. And he's like an actual like pro am type of player, like yeah. a Jamal Crawford, like a guy who could put on a show. You know, shooting threes, you know, mixing people, doing whatever, throwing lobs, throwing dimes. So, like, when you're that type of player and you're in that, and you're in that environment, like, you have to go crazy. You have or to everybody's going to think you're trash. So, if he doesn't perform tonight, well, by the time they see this, he the highlights and everything probably be out For weeks sure. and months before, however long it is. But if he doesn't perform at the Pro-Am in Seattle. It's going to be a bad look. He he might have to. There, there's, like, a Pro-Am ranking list. There's mm-hmm. like the, it's, like, the Drew League. And it's like two and three. I think it's between someone else and then Jamal stuff. Mm-hmm. If you don't perform there, he's gonna have to go to like the, the bottom of the bottom, put on like score a hundred. He's gonna have to come to San Francisco. <laughs> no disrespect. <laughs> no disrespect. He had, he had to come to the SF Pro Am. No disrespect. And I had fun playing in it, but <laughs> <laughs> that's real though. But compared to the Drew and the crossover, like there's no comparison. No comparison. And. Yeah, no, yeah, he has to perform there. But yeah, you had Trey in your session. Yep. Who else? Dude, we had so my class, my twenty seventeen graduating class, which would have been that same group that played EYBO that year, was like Trey Young, uh, Marvin Bagley, Michael Porter, oh. uh, Troy Brown, Gary Trent. Um Wait, was it that pick with all like the EYBO of the league? Yeah. And they all went to the league, like Harry Giles. Yep. Oh, Harry, no, no, Harry Giles was a year be- before me. He was 16. But it was, oh, it was, uh, um, I, so you name all those people, they're all in a picture. Yeah. yeah that was that, that year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God. That was 2017. Damn. Yeah. Yep. Oh, uh, what's his name was there? I think, um, bro from the Magic. Uh, tall uh, dude. Isaac? Uh, Jonathan, Jonathan Isaac? Isaac. Uh, I don't think he was my class. I think he was, I think he's a year older than me. Either way. But that class was crazy. That's a crazy class. Bro. Crazy class. Damn, I, I can just look at the list because there's so many more people I'm missing. Mm-hmm. Uh, honestly, that's one of the better high school classes that we've seen in a while. Not for sure. I I think 
I'm a little biased, but not 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 really. My 2014 class was really stacked too. Facts. We had Stanley Johnson, um, Ooh. Kelly Oubre, mm-hmm. um, who else is in that class with us? Uh, Rashad Vaughn. Yep. I'm, trying, I'm really trying to think. 2014. Uh, because all right, so the 2014 that'd have been what 2016 NBA draft if they did one and done. Yep. So that's so um, were you Markel Fultz was he in your class? Markel, F- no, he's 15. He's 15. He went. He went 2017, I think. Yeah. Uh, to who? Who, who else we have in our class? We had so many heavy hitters in our class. We had a lot of mixtape hitters. Facts. Yeah, like Trev Dunbar's. Facts. Um, <laughs> he was just on my pro am team too. How do you, How do you do? He came off the bench and like, bro. When I seen him, I'm like, bro, this dude. Mm-hmm. I know him from somewhere. Then he started dribbling and shit and doing all his little mixtape shit. Yeah. I was like, oh yeah, that, that's him. Shift, hey bro, when, yeah, shift team legend. He didn't like, he didn't like go dummy or nothing, but like, he had for sure like five of them plays where you're like, oh shit, yeah. yeah. And he's just getting buckets. He hit a couple of threes, mixed dude, <sighs> dropped him, cash with a little lefty jumper. Yeah, like, yeah, no, he was he was playing pretty good. We got the dub too. So. You you on your team? Yeah, it was me, him, and JB. Oh shoot! Oh, oh that! Oh that! Oh that! Day you play there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, quick, quick side sidetrack story. I've I've told this story a thousand times, but I haven't told you. My my first official matchup like against a real basketball player was against Trevor Dunbar, mm-hmm. sixth grade. He, he had the same exact handle. <laughs> so you gonna imagine as a sixth grader, right? We're, we're not used to seeing those type of things. Yeah, so, no, exactly. Um, tip off, tip off, t- like the ball gets tipped off, and we're calling our matchups up. I got number ten. I remember his. I remember his number and everything. I got ten, and he was just tucking in his shirt, like just laughing and smiling, having a good time. Like, oh, he, oh, he, oh, he think it's sweet coming to Sacramento. Yeah. You know what I mean? I said, I said, I got ten. Tip off. I've never been ISO'd off the, <laughs> off a tip off. He gets the ball, four flat. I said, whoa. I'm like, okay. Man, can we one more for, like, man, man come on. Now, now it's just me and you. No, the ball wasn't passed. ISO. He's like four flats. I'm like, I'm sitting. I'm like, okay. And I'm like, I got him. Left to right, boom, shift. Oh shit, Hezzy, jump, Ugh. hit him on top of the forehead, and one, fresh off the gate. First play of the game. I said, hey, I said we gotta switch. <laughs> I said, hey, Bro. I said, I said I, I'm gonna go get. Uh, it was um my boy JoJo. I said I'm gonna go guard the shooter. I, I'll run off the screens. I said someone else gotta guard the ball. I said ain't no way first play of the game you gonna cross me. I'm gonna give you a head tap and and one. That's Bro. not that's, that's not happening. Yeah, that'll change your life for sure. Change change, change my life for. for it changed my life for the better. Um, I became a better man after that. <laughs> <laughs> was there was there one moment where you had a highlight play on somebody and like you were talking your shit at a young age? Uh man. The thing is, bro, I don't even really be talking shit. I only talk shit when like the other person start talking. So when they start talking, yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Like, I ain't even relax, shit. Facts. Like, don't let me. Yeah. Don't okay, let me so then what was the moment where someone started talking mess and you turned up on him? Um, I'm trying to think. When I was young, right? Or it, actually, no. F F the young. Any, any any level at this point. Oh my! College all the time, bro. <clears throat> People he, be trying to try me, bro. Yeah. I don't know why. Like I be chilling. Like I'll talk. I talk on defense, but it's like to my team and for my team. It's not mm-hmm. like I'm talking shit to you. Yeah. But then when people start talking to me individually, it's always BYU too. Oh. I got so many instances with, with BYU where they're just talking shit. Let me hear a story. I got to hear a story. Man. Bro, I got a picture. There's a video, too. But we're at BYU, and they come out the gate hot. You know, they hit a couple shots. Mm-hmm. Uh, whatever. You know, their crowd's hella loud. They, mm-hmm. hold, they hold, like, 15,000 in their arena. So it's like 15,000? Yeah. It's like an NBA arena. That's what I'm saying. They have an NBA arena. Gosh. Like, like it's an NBA game when you play there, like, in the little intro, yeah, when they, you know they'll put up your little video on the screen. They'll watch our video, and it's all quiet. And everybody's just watching, and like, or like whatever. When their video comes up, bro, they drop this big ass drape. The mascot runs around. The cheerleaders get around it, and there's like a whole show on the drape. It's like a projector. It's fucking crazy, bro. They're doing backflips and tucks and shit. Gosh, damn. Okay, they got flags, all that, bro. It's like a yeah. real NBA game. So when they score their first bucket, the whole crowd goes crazy for no reason. Um, so it was like I think like nine to two or nine to three or some shit like that. They jumped on us early. Mm-hmm. Um, then we slowly come back, slowly come back. Then we go on our run. But uh, there's a there's a video on a pitcher where I catch the ball and I shoot it, <clears throat> and the dude sitting courtside is like, 
that's a break, blah, blah, blah. You know, just heckling, yeah. talking shit. And then before it went in, I like looked at him and I was, I said that I was like, pow. Basically, so, yeah. So it, as it was in the air. Yeah, like it was like yeah. right about to go in. I knew it was going in. <clears throat> so I turned back and looked at him and then the dude caught the picture and he got the video and it's fire. And I looked at him and it just ran back on defense. Oh, you guys sent me that? Yeah. The picture, I need that. That shit is That's hard. fire. Yeah. So I, there's, that's one instance and then okay. another one. Um, it was my first year playing because when I first got to San Francisco, I had the red shirt because I came from D2. And when you move up, you got to sit out a year. Okay. Um, so when I got to uh, – we played BYU at home, and it's like the same situation where they're, they're hooping us the whole game, bro, mm. just getting buckets. Um, and I come off the bench, and uh, this dude named – what's his name? Um, oh, what's his name? Was it like last name Hawes? TJ Hawes. TJ Hawes, okay. <laughs> yeah, I need something about yeah, Fucking TJ yeah. Hawes, man. So – White dude, hairline back here, <laughs> always talking shit. Um, he's just talking, you know. He's hitting a couple of shots. He's talking his cash, whatever. Um, and long story short, I end up going ten for ten that game and having thirty two. Gosh, damn! What did he say to you? Just talking shit. Talking off the rip. He do yeah. be he do be talking mess though. He be talking crazy. Bro. I, I, I see. That's why I said I know you talking about because he's. I think he was either twenty fifteen twenty. Might have been my class, or his younger brother might have been my class. Either way, I, every time I watch BYU, they do talk a boatload of oh, shit. I think it's because they're grown ass men. Yeah, they're all grown. Because they're like thirty by the time they're playing. Because they got thirty married, mission. got kids, all type of shit. I swear to God, bro. <clears throat> and it's even worse that we have this extra COVID year. Oh my now they're gosh. Older. Now they're older. Now they're legit twenty four hour fitness grown men, bro. About to get four hundred one k plans set up and all type <laughs> of shit, bro. It's crazy. But yeah, bro. So I went crazy that game, and then yeah, he never talked again after that. See, and there's no better feeling than shutting up someone who's talking trash. No, exactly. Right? Exactly. And I think it's even more disrespectful if someone talks trash to you and you don't talk trash back to them. You give them forty. <laughs> <laughs> like if if they're talking and you they're not getting a reaction out of you and you busting their ass. Oh, it's like, bro, why are you even talking? It's bro? like kid in the candy store. No, literally. Like I'm, 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 I'm ecstatic. Yeah, literally. And you said you played Division Two. Yeah. Where'd you play at? Central Washington. Oh, snap. Yeah, I was at Central at first. Okay. So I I played D2 as well. We we played, um, what freaking D2 school did we play out there? It's, they're like Baby Blue. Uh, Dalton what, Holmes played for them. Western Washington. Western Washington. Yep. Wow. Amazing. Oh, you played against Dalton? He was a freshman. Yeah, he was oh, a freshman okay. in my, that was my junior year, senior year. And was that before he got his growth spurt? Yeah, because so how how it played was I think no that that's my that was my soft no junior year as a freshman year because in my senior year he was a sophomore but we didn't play him sophomore year but basically that game um, I don't even really remember him playing he's like yeah bro I played against you at Western Washington I was like you did yeah. I just remember this one dude who wore a mask and he gave us like thirty like jab so work him? huh it was Dalton it was not him uh, it was he's jab work fades. I'm like, I'm like, coach, you said, on the, you said on the scouting report, don't let him go middle, right? Keep him to, the, keep him to the baseline. Contest all shots. He likes to take tough shots. I was like, every shot he took looked hella easy. So I'm like, <laughs> someone's lying on the scouting report. And then my my matchup was this very, 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 very the fastest guard I've ever guarded. Forgot his name, but he got from point A to point B quick. Mm-hmm. So I remember telling coach, I'm like, hey, you know, I don't think I should pick up three quarters court because he's coming from a head full head of steam. He's like, you yeah, know, you just gotta turn him a couple times. I'm like, I don't think, I don't think you understand. If I have to, if I'm gonna have to guard him, it's either I gotta guard him from the three point line <laughs> or guard him 94 <laughs> feet and turn him. Exactly. They know he's too fast for that. So I said, you want him to get a full head start at three quarters court, and I, and then it, it got it got to a point where I start doing my own thing. I said, you know what, I'm just guard yeah, high no, guard no, because no. guarding a quicker guard, either if you're not guarding him full court and putting pressure on him early, or you're not guarding him picking him up like when when, when everybody packs the paint. Is you can't guard in three yeah, quarters no. court. That's not gonna work, bro. It's not gonna work every every time. It, Bulldogs sh- go by in and out. Ugh. I remember one time he would have came full speed in and out. I did a, I did a full turn, one of those little I one of those little turn. And, and I look, <laughs> he wasn't there. I said, oh, he, was, <laughs> he's, he's he stayed in the same spot. But I was trying to beat him to the spot, and I was like, yeah, it's one of those days. Lost my thirty that day, by the way. Oh, yeah. I have a lot. I have a lot of thirty point losses. Never never above that though. Yeah, that's all I keep hearing, bro. What's up with the What's up with Here's the, the thing, ball? man. Um, you know, never, I, mean, I never, know what happens sometimes, but damn. 
<laughs> it, it's a uh, high school never got thirty ball. Actually, I, I went to Capital Christian, top forty in the nation. Um, you know what I'm saying I'm a tutor on her right now. One of the best teams in Sacramento history. Our senior year, we went twenty eight and four. The only two we lost two games in Northern California to Bishop O'Dowd. So they okay. had Ivan yeah. Rab, Paris Austin, and they ended up losing to Stanley Johnson in the state championship. Yeah, because he won four in a row, right? The greatest high school basketball player in California history, four in a row. Yeah, I remember that. at four different positions because <laughs> he kept getting bigger and taller. Bro, peep this though. He started off his freshman year playing center, power forward, small forward guard. Four rings. He was playing center his freshman year. Six six center, modern day. Like center power for it. That's why. So he bre- he didn't progressively go from point guard to up. He went yeah. from big man to guard. That's why. Four wild. rings. And it's crazy because that's like that happens a lot nowadays. Yeah. Like every big is trying to like be a guard or every big's trying to get a jumper, trying to learn how to dribble. Like mm-hmm. it's crazy how times. Who you think change. who uh whose fault you think that is? That'd be Stanley's. Stanley's. What about NBA wise? Whose fault is that? Why bigs want to be guards now? Mm-hmm. Honestly, I honestly don't have a really good answer. I just wanted to pick your brain, and see if you did. I mean, I mean, when you just see dudes that's just seven foot with ratchet and handle, oh, shit, like Kevin it just Durant. make you want to be, you know. Kevin Durant, the CKDs, you see Giannis's, you see Gosh. you don't got a ratchet, but you see him bringing the ball up, handling it, making plays, like that's true. You know all that type of shit. So it just it makes you want to do it. You're like, oh, I'm the same height as him. Why can't I do it? That's true. I uh, I did it. I did see a clip um, a month ago. This this video is a year old. I don't know if you've seen it. Rudy Gobert is playing one v one against the seven three number one draft prospect. When when B, however you say his name, the one that everybody's trying to get for next is he year's from draft. From France. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I seen him. So he's nice, bro. Bro, he's well. First of all, like he's more shiftier than like Chet is. Yeah, make my pitch. Hey man, if you're watching this, <laughs> um, if if Sacramento, if we can land him, I just want a five percent cut. That's all. You know what I'm saying I'm just gonna be make, make my pitch early, but he's more shifty than Shet. Plays good, good defense. He's taller, longer. Yeah. Really, my my player. He's like he's like a literally created player. Literally. So I saw them play one on one, and this was a year ago. I seen Rudy Gobert hit a tween cross, bang out like top of the key in and out tween cross. I said that 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 then showed me. These NBA players are ridiculous. No facts. Because he's not gonna do that in an actual game. But I seen him, <laughs> and it looked it looked fluent though. It was it wasn't like a you know a big like it's like hella choppy. It was like a pound tween cross. I said, whoa! Now I know why he wants his own team. He's trying to be KD. <laughs> no, literally, bro. But he should not be doing that. No, he, he need to just work on getting a bag down below first before you worry about tween crossing and all that. No, I mean yeah. He, 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 first one he uh, yeah. He need to worry about a lot of things. Other than that, he knew about Dan getting a, getting a freaking playoff series win. No facts. Because goodness gracious, um, well he's gone. They, oh, he's with. Tim, Tim. Yep. <laughs> he's in Minnesota. Him and Carl Anthony Towns, we said pick and rolls for each other. Literally. Rudy Gobert is. You heard it first. He's gonna come off a of pick and roll this year. I, I, he, <laughs> Rudy Gobert is gonna come off a of pick and roll this year and be a, a fucking seven three uh, fucking point center, whatever man, you call they, it. They're gonna be throwing lobs to each other, man. That's gonna be crazy. I'm not gonna lie though. That team might be nice. <sighs> Not better than the Warriors. No. Nah. Not better than the Kings. Not better than the Lakers. Whoa, 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 huh? whoa, 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 whoa. What happened? What was that? Whoa. I said something crazy? The Kings aren't better than the Sonics. Well, that that technically can't be true because the Sonics aren't a team no more. My point. Jesus Christ. Well, that, that, they, well, there's that there. <laughs> um, respectfully. Respectfully, but here, here's my thing, though. Right, we're not we, we're not better than the Sonics, according to you. Yeah, but um, I know I have no comeback. I have no, I have, I, I have nothing. The thing is, you guys have good players too. You have great players. You guys have great skilled players. I I, I think our downfall. I'm not gonna get into it too much. Our downfall is our office. Really? Shit, damn it! I didn't want to say it. it. Just came out. Pause. Wow. Oh, hey. Go crazy, then. No. <laughs> so, kind of kind of moving on to college basketball again. Um, you're able to play in March Madness. Yes. 
That is the one shining moment. Literally, that was crazy. What did that like? How was playing in the in March Madness, bro? It was unexplainable, bro. Like aside from like playing, <clears throat> just the whole experience, bro. Like flying out there, mm-hmm. um, first class. Oh, what like like private jet? Yeah, yeah. Well, what we it? we fly private wherever we go. Well, excuse me. Yeah, we fly on jets wherever. We go. What do you what do you what do you mean like when you when you play the BYU and mm-hmm. everywhere like charter private or like like yeah like charter private so like everybody gets like a first class type of seat like a big Basically. old seat and like there's like a table yeah you get your little yeah so every game yeah every away game we took a jet to Cal Poly one time we were supposed to drive and then like last minute we just hopped on a plane flew down there it's like a 21 minutes. So you're saying you don't you don't fly coach. You don't go to the airport and go to Southwest and have to check in and all that. You guys fly charter. Yeah, we haven't flown like regular. Not regular, but we haven't flown coach since like 2019. You bougie motherfucker. Honestly, we have to thank COVID though. Because we didn't start flying private until COVID happened. But then like we just kept it going. My my cheap ass. I'm thinking about the 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 price of the damn private the, the charter plane. Man, I don't even want to talk about it. But wait a minute. I think they said it's like we flew to Oh, and we played in Connecticut during COVID when we beat Virginia when they were number yeah, four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and we had to stop to get gas or fuel mm-hmm. <clears throat> in the middle of nowhere. But like they said fuel was like I think like I don't know. I want to say the wrong number. I think like eight thousand for the fuel, and the jet itself was like fifteen bands. Well, um, we <laughs> we see what kind of lifestyle he living over here. He got Man. big bread. I don't got no big. Nah, bread. God, nah, <laughs> damn it, nah. He got big bread. Look, look, <laughs> listen, listen, look, look. I'm gonna tell you right now. I well, I haven't asked enough people. No one's ever told me they've flown private to all the away games in college. I thought that was just a March Madness thing. Nah. No, the March Madness plane was even crazier. So explain what's, what's yeah, yeah, elaborate on that. So, like, we have, like, when we fly, like, during the season, we have, like, our regular little jet. It holds all the coaches. And PJ, us. by the way, y'all, he, he a jet owner. Go ahead. Yeah, not, not the owner. I wish I was My bad. Okay. <laughs> okay, continue, continue. But, nah, so we get, all the players get a seat. Uh, the coaches and then the um, extended staff. Okay. We fly there, you know, play, get on the plane, fly back. The jet they gave us for uh, March Madness was like a, bro, it was like an NBA jet. The big ones were like, like you get the, like, the seat was like this, just like this. I had like a little thing, table that folded out in front of me. I had buttons. I was kicked back. Oh, damn. My head. <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I was kicked all the way back. Like, whatever snacks, you know, just like like Mike type stuff. And how far was the flight? To Indianapolis. Yeah. It's so like, it was what, like three, four? four? Yeah, I think like four. So you live in Lavish. Yeah, we was chilling, bro. Like, get a walk around, goof like. Yeah, and like, and not like walk around like this, like walk around, stretch, enjoy life, like do some jumping. So you jacks. have to walk through the aisle, like, you know, the side, like scoot through the aisle? Nah. Like two people could have walked side to side and walked down the aisle. So is that gonna mess up you, 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 your mentality when it comes to flying now? Because you you flown private. For the, yeah, for the, but I'm like, not. You know, I'm not hella boozy or nothing. I'll get on the coast flight. I respect that. Okay, I respect that. You better, you better than me. Let let me fly private. Yeah. Let me fly private one time. <laughs> I guarantee you, you ain't never gonna see me on another private flight because it's gonna cost a lot of damn money. So let me shut the fuck up, man. Um, <laughs> 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 but no, that that's dope. So so you, so you, you get to India, Indianapolis. Oh yeah, yeah. So, boom, we the jet land there, police escort, off rip, off rip. We have our Jeez. our uh our buses. Mm-hmm. Everybody gets on the bus, and mind you, we flew usually just the coaches and the players. We flew the cheerleaders. We flew out the donors. We flew out. Wow, like the there was hella people on the plane, bro. Mm-hmm. So we get off. We have two big ass buses that picks everybody up. We have like. Six motorcycles and two cars that, you know, motorcade us to uh-huh. uh, wherever we got to go. Uh, we go to the hotel. There's a big ass, you know, the big ass uh, bracket. Wow. They have a little heart emoji next to our names. Um, That's crazy. We're the only ones who stayed in that hotel. Yeah. Then. Um, Wait, so each team got their own hotel. I don't know if that's, I don't know if that was the case, but we was the only one in our hotel. Okay. 
Um, but nah, bro, it was just love everywhere we went. Like, walking down the street, we went to, like, Steak and Shake, like, across the street. Everybody's like, oh, Don's, like, stuff like that. Got to the, we played in the Pacers Arena, got there. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just crazy, bro. It's a movie. Me and JB had to do media. Um, and we walk in, bro, the room's hella big. There's, like, at least... 30, 40 reporters just, like, wow. sitting there just, like, you know, they ask us questions or whatever. Yeah. Um, it was just wild, bro. Just being in the Pacers arena, they're giving us, you know, this gourmet food after our workouts. Yes. Um, it was just crazy, bro. It was really a movie. It was wild. So you guys are sitting at the podium uh, answering questions in, in the practice jerseys. No, nah, we was in uh, sweatsuits. We had just got done having, like, our little practice shoot around. Okay. So we had, like, got dressed right quick, and then um, they just called us in to ask a few questions. Um, and yeah, bro, it was just a big-ass room, just hella laptops, hella mics, hella, yeah. like, all type of stuff like that. So it was pretty dope. I, I kind of want to dive a little deeper into that. I don't want a more serious topic. I mean, on a more serious tip, pause. It, just, it sounds crazy. I heard you. Yeah. <laughs> but... <laughs> When when you say you know you got around like you shoot around come back with the sweatsuit on go on the podium and get interviewed, how surreal is that for you? Like as a kid growing up, hopefully like dreaming to be in the NBA one day, and that's like a big step to get there. And these guys and gals are asking you questions. Yeah. How surreal is that moment? It's wild, bro. It's like because <clears throat> I remember like. Playing my player on 2K. Yeah. And after the games, you got to go to the interviews and yep, stuff like yep, that. Yep. Like, it was like almost like deja vu. Like, I've seen it happen so many times. And then now that, like, I'm finally hearing it's happening to me, it's like, yeah. it's crazy. But, like, I wasn't, like, nervous or, like, anxious or anything. Because, mm-hmm. like, for the most part, I don't know. When I speak to the media or whatever, like, obviously I say I'm not ignorant or anything or say nothing wild. But, like, I pretty much be myself. So mm-hmm. it's not like I'm trying to, like, look for the right thing to say. Yeah. Um. When they answer, when they ask questions, I answer them. However, I feel like I gotta answer them. Um, so in that regard, it was, it was smooth. But just like after, like we did sit up there, and they were like, you know, thank you guys for your time, blah 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 blah. And then we walked down the stairs and stuff, going back to the locker room. It's just like, damn, bro, we just had it. Shit was crazy. Like just trying to like yeah. enjoy every moment, you yeah. know, not take it for granted. But um, yeah, that shit was fire, bro. Because the reason why I ask that is, you know, you. You sometimes I said this to my uh, to Ty yesterday, mm-hmm. when when you're in the moment around something or in something, you kind of just go blank and don't realize the magnitude of the moment that you're in. Exactly. Being able to be interviewed at March Madness, I was going to tell you, that's a huge moment. For sure. I know people back home are inspired. They see that. They they hyped. Like you on national television right now. For real. You literally playing in front of millions of people on national television. You know, granted you guys lost, mm-hmm. but. It's the experience that matters. For sure. You know, not not everybody can win March Madness. Not everybody can play Division One basketball. Not everyone can make it to the tournament. Literally. You guys were one of 64. That's insane. Facts. Like, not the first four. You guys are, like, seated. Yeah, we had an at-large bid. Like, that's... that's Because you guys have Gonzaga in your conference, mm-hmm. so they always get the bid every year, dang near. For sure. Right? If you guys get an at-large bid and not the first four in... It's usually a toss up between St. Mary's and BYU, like yep. second and third. Yep. It's usually like us or LMU or something. Mm-hmm. So for us to have that, bro, it's crazy. And even that experience, bro, we had like a little, uh, a little show party mm-hmm. in our gym. We invited all the fans, all the family members, um, and you know we did the little thing. It's like set up like this. There's cameras. Yeah, they're watching us, waiting to see our response whenever we see our name get picked. And bro, we was man waiting there for a minute to the point where like we're like damn bro we so they don't they don't tell you before you get picked oh no, bro so you're just like, watching it live when you see that that reaction that you see people have that shit is real in the moment bro like we didn't know our coach didn't know he didn't get like a little text yeah two yeah before nothing bro so because you know like nba draft they usually call your agent or yeah, someone so you kind of know your agent cameras they, come around exactly nothing like that they have the camera set up just like this and we just waiting Oh, this team's gonna play this team. This team's gonna play this team. They go through the whole first three yeah. uh, sections. We're like, damn, where we going? So you 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 sitting there watching the whole entire selection show, the whole show, bro. Oh. To the point where like JB, I got up and went to the bathroom. Like people's doing other things on their phones. I was like, damn, where we gonna get picked? Then we were supposed to. There was like one spot where we thought for sure we were gonna be, and it was supposed to be playing USC. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it was like the uh, the seventh. 
or the eighth seed, something like that. Yeah. But we thought we were supposed to play USC, and then we didn't see our name called. So we're like, damn, we're going to the NIT. Then they get to that last section, bro, and this was like, it had to be this or it was nothing. Mm -hmm. Murray State. I'm like, bro, it got to be us, bro. It got to be us. And they say, University of San Francisco. Bro. All of us stand up and it's crazy, bro. Was it, was it like winning a championship in a way? Literally. Yeah. Like, bro, it, my heart dropped, bro. Like, I just stood up. I was just like, <laughs> Shit. I remember, I remember <laughs> you had the hat on, you had the satchel, I mean, the little uh, the, 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 uh, fanny pack across the chest. Yeah. I said, dang, you're literally going to the freaking tournament. That's bro, so dope. It was crazy, bro. Like, and then we all got to, like, experience that as a group. Like, we had been through so much that year, bro. Like, you know, with, with basketball teams, you know, people see you at the games, and after that, they think your life just shuts off, and there's other shit that goes on in your yeah. life with your teammates, with, you know, with the coaches, with everything. So, mm -hmm. like, all the stuff that we had been through that year, for us to experience that and just have that moment together, bro, it was fire. And, like, you know, we didn't win at March Madness, but we ain't been to the tournament. Our school ain't been to the tournament since, like, I think it was, like, 23 years, 20. Damn. Yeah, 24 years. They said, like, 98. Yeah. Yeah, so and I was born in 98. So, like. That's ironic. Since, I, since I've been alive. That's crazy. It's wild, bro. So, like, for us to do that, shit was a movie, bro. I, I think it's it's a, it's an attest to show two things. One, when when you're so what's 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 the what's the answer? I mean the question. When or the statement, damn, I'm going all over the place. When you're when you're so in the moment of things, yeah. right? Especially in a moment like that, that is I and the reason why I asked was it a championship type of moment because when people say they win championships, it's like a blood transfusion amongst brothers. Mm -hmm. And I, I kind of debate that and say, Well, I think they can get to pinnacles of places you've never been to yeah. are championships Facts. reaching buying your first home buying your first car buying your first own pair of shoes like small things small victories those are championships those are trophies and making it to march madness is like one of the biggest things ever because you always hear college basketball final four yeah. march madness literally and everybody knocks teams who get knocked out the first round knocked out the first four but my you guys are understanding here there's a total of 68 teams in one tournament there are over, I don't know how many college universities. I think there's, man, I think there's like 350, 352 or 358, like somewhere in between. Yeah, in in, in, in the States, right? Yeah, in the United States. Yeah, so yeah. about 352 Division One universities? Division ones. I don't think it's, that, that's such a small sample size. So you have to be top dang near 64 in the whole United States to even be on that platform. Thanks. And I always tell people this. I've never believed the best team wins March Madness who has the best matchup. That's what it is. It's all about matchups. It's all about matchups. Because we, we've seen uh, number twos get knocked out. We we saw number one get knocked they out, didn't we? They played right before us. We watched that shit happen. We're in the tunnel, like, waiting. Mm -hmm. We're all warming up, mm -hmm. just jumping and stuff. And, like, damn, this shit hella close. Boom, three. Boom, foul, free throws. They're going up. They're going up. We're like, bro, are they about to win? Buzzer goes off. St. Peter's wins. So, so you watched that like you were we were right wow. in the tunnel, bro, and to the point where so they pushed us back because we were standing right in the tunnel watching it. And then when mm -hmm. the game ended, they had to clear the walkway. Yeah, they pushed us back in the hallway. All you see is uh, what's bro's name, Sweeby. Yeah, 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 yeah. All you see is him coming through crying. All you see is Coach K come through hella mad. All that Ty Ty, all them guys, they walk right past us, right in front of us. We seen all that shit happen, bro. It was crazy. So you saw the natural reaction off rip. Natural. Crying, it, tear, real tears, bro. Like, damn, I worked my ass off. I worked all year to lose to a team he wasn't, you know, not to say that it wasn't supposed to lose, yeah. but like to St. Peter's type of team, you know, it's just, it's heartbreaking, bro, when you put in so much work. But like, it can happen to anybody, bro. That is, that is actually insane. I didn't even think about, I I, I forgot they played Indianapolis. Yeah, they played right before us, bro. And then what was your guys' seed number? We were the 10th seed. 10th seed, so you guys played 7? It was a 7. 7? So who 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 would you guys have played in if you won? We would play St. Peter's. Oh my gosh, that's we crazy! And if we would have beat St. Peter's, we would have went to Sweet Sixteen. Two wins, Sweet Sixteen, just like that. Just like that, bro. It's and and that's why I say it's so crazy when people try to knock people who forget losing in the first round, second round, whatever. It's it's so hard to make it there. Bro, Everything has to go right, literally. And you don't get to choose who you play. And it's not like the NBA playoffs, like. It's one game. Uno. 
one game. People have one bad game, like like a game that's bad, like all the time. Yeah. So if you have that one bad game, like I did, mm-hmm. I had like one of my worst games as a college basketball player. Yeah. At March Madness, so like that one game, that's all it takes, and it's done. What was what was your mentality after that game? I was hurt, bro. Yeah. Not even like on like nothing selfish, but more so like, damn, I could have did more for my team, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> and even like leading up to that game, uh. Like, I was killing, bro. Had 27 against Gonzaga the game before. Yeah. Had 21 and, like, 8 against um, BYU before that. Um, like, the last five games, I was averaging, like, 21 points. And that's when I broke my nose and I was wearing a mask. The mask, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, like, having all those good games, like, if I could throw all those good games away and have one good game in March, I would. Yeah. Because that would have helped us win. We lost by, I think, like, four or five points. I think it was 75 to 71, so four it points. Was, it was a close game. I remember that. Real close. So, I mean... If I could just have one good game, bro, on that stage, I I trade all my games back for it. But it's just like you gotta learn from it. Yeah. Now this year, I'm more even driven to go crazy, and when I do get back to that stage, it's not gonna be the same outcome for sure. Locked in, I'm, I'm already knowing. And, I, I, and sure. I want you to kind of just always remember, like to to be kind to yourself too, because it, although you didn't have the showing you wanted, yeah, you still were the reason part of the reason why your team got there in the first place. Yeah, for sure. And one thing I want to tell people out there are people are quick to bash somebody when they have a bad game, mm-hmm. talk trash about someone when they have a bad game. And I I kind of, like, despise it at the highest level when people do that because who are we to say as spectators, just because someone had a bad game, oh, they're trash, or the moment was too big. Yeah. I, I don't believe in it. I don't believe in the moment too big. I believe in sometimes the, the cookie just didn't crumble your way. Yeah. But one thing that you can always control is your effort. Facts. It was there. Facts. Playing defense. You're 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 sliding, you know what I'm saying? You're sliding for basketballs or you know, you're 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 talking to your teammates. That's one thing you can control. For sure. The ball going in and out, we honestly can't control that. That's a fifty fifty shot every time it goes up. So when people try to say the the moment's too big for somebody because they're not scoring. It's it's tough outside of like LeBron James, Kevin Durant, people who are like the top zero point zero 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 one percent. But when it comes to college athletes who aren't even in the NBA yet, I feel like we got to chill out with being too harsh on them because at the end of the day, we're still human. No facts, you know, and they're not professionals just yet. So when 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 people bash people for having a bad performance, mm-hmm. I ask them to look themselves in the mirror and be like, okay, what would you do in the situation? What would you do? No facts. Oh, I would go for 30. Okay, you ain't never been in a gym that holds 100 people. Facts. So how are you going to sell somebody in a gym that, mind you, that was, the the March Madness arenas are super big, aren't they? Yeah, or that's, they're NBA arenas. The NBA arenas, right? Yeah. So you, you go from playing in a college setting to an NBA arena, right? And our gym holds 3,000 people. And Indiana Pistons hold like, what, 25,000, 30,000? Yeah, yeah something And it's packed yeah. out? Exactly. So... You guys have got to understand this, is, and they get one game. There's no, oh, we get to go back to the drawing board and come back, you know, and play them again tomorrow. You get one game to figure it out, and sometimes it just doesn't fall your way. And I just want to say, you know, just just to be kind to yourself, man, because I know that can kind of suck when you, you know, you don't perform the way you should have, yeah. but you still get the opportunity to do it again this year. Facts. So I'm excited to see the fuel to the passion and the hunger this year. No, oh, yeah, this year, yeah, it's, this it's, year, it's this year's got to go up. It got to be. It's the last one, man. I don't get no more years. Come on. I don't get no more COVID, monkey Come on. box, none of, none of that extra year stuff. This is the, this is the one. So. And after that tournament, after that game, you into the draft or kept your eligibility, right? Yep. What was that process like? For that, I mean, for me, it wasn't like um, too, too, like, I didn't get, like, the full experience as somebody who was, like, a already on the draft boards or anything like that. Yeah. Um, it was just more so me, like, trying to get feedback from coaches or feedback from teams, what they think I should do next year or, like, how it's going to help my stock. Yeah. Um, things like that. I didn't end up going to do any workouts. Okay. I was just kind of working out with my – um one of the coaches I'm super close with, Benny McGee. Yeah. Um, we are just working out in the gym, just working on the more so pro game, yeah. you know, rather than a college game. Uh. So that was pretty much it. It was cool. It wasn't like nothing too different. My life didn't change too drastically. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just knowing that I gotta put up better numbers in the sense that um just being more efficient. Um obviously average more points, more assists, mm-hmm. and just show that I can play make 
you know, being a short guard and not super athletic, mm -hmm. you got to kind of do more than other people. So kind of show you can do everything and just show that you can lead a team in that sense. And since I've been here at San Francisco, I haven't really been able to lead a team because we've always had Jamari. Mm -hmm. And he's like the guy, you know, point guard and like the guy who like runs the show. And I was just kind of like the guy who brings energy, plays defense and scores the ball. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, this year with me coming back, just kind of, you know, just go out there and lead a team, play, make do whatever it takes to win and just still be myself while doing all that. So so entering the draft, um, it allows NBA execs and stuff to talk to you? Yeah, not necessarily the execs, but um, it allows you to, you know, schedule workouts. It allows okay. you to, um, like, be just be involved with them. It's not necessarily that they're going to call you and be like, hey, look. Ooh, yeah, yeah. But you can, like um, – you can sign with an agent, but you have to make sure in your clause that, you know, once you pull your name from the draft, you still remain eligibility. Mm. Um, so that's kind of like the whole thing with people entering the draft is like just to test the waters and like have people be able to contact you if they want to. That makes sense. You know, so, yeah. So then you return for, for, for one more year. Mm -hmm. um, I believe you have a name for it. Uh, like your Like your last year. I, I I seen you post something um, along the lines of, like, one more year, um, and you're, like, documenting it. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, the yeah. The Book of Bazzi. Okay, yeah, Book, Book of Bazzi. Ba Book of Bazzi's on the way, man. It's a little documentary, um, just kind of documenting the, the last year and just kind of, like, you know, everything I've been through. I feel like my story is a little um, unorthodox, and it's a little uncommon. Mm -hmm. But it's also, like, it's not uncommon in the sense that it doesn't happen, but it's uncommon in the sense that it's put into the light. Yeah, I feel like there's been like a lot of dudes who go Division Two and go to Division One or go JUCO and go to Division One, but um, nobody documents it, you know. And I feel like you know, with me having my rap career and having my clothes and mm -hmm. just me being who I am and my type of personality, um, it's something that I want to document. So we're, we're getting it, getting it going, and starting off this summer. Okay, uh, some pro am games, you know, some yeah. day in the life type of stuff. So yeah. And I should have had him come here. He, you should have had him pull up. Yeah, I should have. And I think it's dope because, you know, a lot of people don't do the documentary type stuff unless they have, like, a huge following. Yeah. And I'm like, why Why is that? Like, why do you have to have a huge following to document your life? I feel like what you're doing is dope because you have the utmost confidence in yourself. For sure. And you're allowing the ability for someone to document you, all your vulnerabilities, all your trials and tribulations. And I think that's dope because there's a story out there for everybody. So your story needs to be seen by somebody out there. Exactly. No matter on what stage you are in. And I talk to people where I'm like, why don't you just document these certain things? I'm like, I don't have enough, like a big enough following yet. I'm like, who gives a damn? Yeah, no, facts. Like, like I don't, I don't, when I watch a freaking Netflix documentary, right? I've, I've watched some where I don't even know who the heck this person is, but I'm like, I want to learn the story. Facts. Exactly. That's, that's the whole point of it. You're trying to get people to learn your story. Because if they don't learn your story, they're never going to know you anyway. So why not just go full throttle, document it, so people can see everything. Facts. And then they get to learn you more in all, in all in one click. And the two big things with that is like, so for example, if, uh, what's bro's name? Cootie. Mm -hmm. If he Coot wasn't documenting Kanye shit C come back on. in the day. Come on. That shit, how much they sell it for? Like $10 million or something. Like, Bro, that contract was lucrative. Something crazy. Yeah. And it's like, if he didn't start back then when Kanye didn't have, they, they didn't even have followings back then. They had, they had, that word was even mouth. the dot-com <laughs> era. It was literally word of mouth. Literally. They had the little, the, the pagers, the house phones. That's what I'm saying. So it's like, if Cootie didn't like just pick up a camera and just start doing it then, like, granted it took a long time, but like, it paid off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, 100%. People got to see the story from the beginning. Yeah. That's the best thing. And like, a lot of people... The other thing is, like, people want to, like you said, wait till they have a following, but what if you never get it? So what are you going to do, never document it? You feel me? And what's the limit? Like, all right, I'm going to start documenting when I get to 10,000 followers. Or I'm going to document when I get to 20,000. It's like, bro, if you do it now, at least, and even then, if you do start now, you can see, like, your your fan base and people who fuck with you from the jump. Fact. And then once it gets going, then you can have the people that you already knew. Like, okay, he been with me since the beginning. He been with me since the beginning. Yeah. Shit like that. So, I mean... That's why, and I've always like loved cameras. I've always yeah. loved. I like watching documentaries. I watched Stanley Johnson. That's how I knew he had four in a row. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Watching just uh, the State of Nate, watching uh, the come Book on. of Isaiah. Like, come on, come on, bro. Like all type of shit. So it's like, you start now, bro. 
fuck it. Yeah, I I think too one of the, one of the biggest things that you're yeah, that you're talking about and alluding to is people think that viewership is the main reason and leading factor into reaching people. Yeah. For instance, you can watch a video that has a million views, but what did I learn from that? Exactly. I can watch a video with 100 views and learn a lot. I I, I started documenting my high school career, like in the hallways and vlogging, 2011. Mm -hmm. Those vids don't got a hell of views. Facts. But I know for a fact I can always go back and watch what I was doing when I was 15 years Facts. old. Facts. For the rest of my life. Literally. My kids can go watch my Cougar Diaries documentaries. <laughs> it's like 10 episodes <laughs> on my YouTube channel. They could go watch that for the rest of my life. Yeah, it's documented. So if anybody ever asks me about certain things and I have proof, I'm like, oh, go uh, go watch it. Just go watch for yourself and see what we were doing back in high school. And like, I feel like that's dope. So if you document something, you always have that. Not even just proof. You always have something to look back on, show your yeah. kids, show your kids' kids. And the people who mess with you will be able to even connect you on a deeper level. Exactly. Um, it's not always about like oh, I got to do this to make money or I got to do this. Like, facts, facts. Like, bro, it's a, it's a lesson. It's just connecting with type like different types of people. Like, yep. it's way more than just making these videos and shit to make a dollar. You know? Shh, come on, man. So, I mean, and a lot of people don't understand that, especially in this time where everything's about money. Come on. Um, yeah, man, you just got to just do it, bro. Just yeah. Fuck it. People don't understand, like, e even this, I'm, I'm even be more transparent with you guys. This podcast right here, I came out of pocket with everything. It's not about making the money for me. It's about getting people's stories out there. Exactly. It's about learning more about people, more about people learning about me from an unfiltered um, scene. And and I'm like, at the end of the day, that's going to pay dividends in the long term. Exactly. I'm not like, I have to do something for money right now, right now, right now. I want to do this. I'm actually passionate about learning about people. I like talking to people and picking their brain anyways. So why not just do it on, on a setting to where we can control our own narratives? Facts. Right? And I'm big on that. So, which which brings me to my next part of the conversation, controlling your own narrative. I feel like you can do that huge with music. Yeah, for sure. So, you make music. Yeah, I do. I do. Um, talk about, I've, I've heard some of your music. It's actually pretty good. Yeah. Right? Usually you get basketball players that make music and you're like, ah. <laughs> ah. I've, been hearing, I've been hearing something lately, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm like, ah. Yeah, yeah. But talk about that journey. Man, bro, I always, like, <clears throat> even since I was a kid, bro, I, like, always, like, words. I always, like, beats, instrumentals. Like, I don't know, I always just love music. Every time I ride with my mom and, like, you know, we had a little a little minivan back in the day. Mm -hmm. um, she had all the little uh, CDs or cassettes or whatever it was. Um, when she plays songs, I just always know all the words. Like, yeah. every single, like, every single word to every song. I could tell you the order of the album, everything. So, I don't know. I just always, like, had a thing for music. And then um, fast forward into when I, like, start making music, um, it's just always fun, bro. I feel like the best things always start off just, like, like passion and just, like, just fun. Like, you're yeah. not doing it like, oh, I got to make money or, oh, I got to do this or do that. I got to be this big. Like, I think it just starts off just you just having a love for it. Mm -hmm. So, that's kind of how it started for me. And then. Um, I was like, "Fuck! I'm gonna just make a song and drop it." So mm -hmm. then, with Keys when he came, yeah, out yeah, 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 he uh he had a little makeshift studio in the closet. So we was just in there making a whole bunch of songs. Like we got like ten ten songs that we'll never release. Yep, you know? <laughs> I've heard them. Yeah, have you? Yeah, he, it, I played him in a car. Come on, see, played him in DC's car. Played him in his own car. I said, okay, that's okay now. So yeah, we make all types of songs. Um, <clears throat> so then uh. We recorded this one song called The Hope. And um it was just like my first song that I felt like was the best put together song. So I was just like, Oh, so I just drop it? He was like, Yeah, bro, fuck it. Like he had already had like a little project out with him and his homie. So mm -hmm. he was like, Bro, just drop it, bro. Like, nobody cares. And at the end of the day, like, it's not like you're trying to make a career off of this. You're just doing it out of love and out mm -hmm. of the fun. So then I was like, Yeah, you're right. So then I just dropped it. It wasn't like the best produced song. It wasn't the best bars. It wasn't nothing nowhere near the best yeah. or even good honestly so i just like i was just like whatever dropped it um and everybody was showing love mm -hmm. it was like you know this is cool whatever woo, 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 woo. and um that's kind of how i got started and then i dropped the ep called working with what i got 
Um, and like at the time when I dropped that, I thought it was like the best shit ever. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And like fast forward and now <clears throat> that I have like, you know, better access to better um, facilities or better access to better equipment, mm-hmm. whatever. And I'm just getting smarter, knowing how to make songs, find pockets, put bars together, make songs and stuff yeah. like that. Um, I just feel like it's not that good. The old work that I had, it, was, yeah. it, was, it wasn't that good. I thought it was at the time. Um, so now this new EP I'm about to drop on Wednesday. Um, I could say as of right now, it's my best work that I've put together. What's it called? It's called um, Finding Myself. Mm, okay. Yep, Finding okay. Myself. So it's it's just me. I have no features. Uh, and I like real rap. I like to rap about my life and things that I've been through, things that I want in my future. Um, and like, shit that just goes on in like my life like whether it's back in the hood in seattle or yeah out here in san francisco or like shit i might rap about this meeting or uh, this interview you know yeah, just shit like that you know what i mean come on like hey you know well i mean well first of all tell me tell me rapping begins so like where they can find your music everywhere under under what low bazzy come on now spell it for him hey l-i space b-a-z-z-y low bazzy also, oh, also, oh, it's not L I L. Yeah, L I L. Oh, L. I'm tripping. L I L. My fault. L I L. B A Z Z Y. Apple Music, Spotify, everywhere. Lil Bazzy. YouTube. Tap in. Whatever you need. Come on. Um. So you know, since you're a music enthusiast, uh, I I like to say I am myself. So we're gonna go ahead and um, knock this out the park right now. Uh, I do this thing called quick bars. Quick bars. So I need you. To, you know, what I'm saying I'm 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 gonna start it off, and then you know you can let me know what you think. Uh, we might need some from you too. Okay, let's see. <clears throat> Here's some. Peep game. Check it. Talk to me. It's quick bars. Uh. When I'm on a court getting these buckets, it's something ill. Mm-hmm. Today is the 31st of July. We got the epidemic. No, epidemic. I messed it up. Damn it. See? Epidemic. See, is but the if you word. mess up, you can't let them know you messed up. You got. Oh just no, no, I'm I'm talking it off because they don't even know what I'm talking about. I got the epidemic and we on this thing, and my clip is trill. I shoot a three. Ah. I'm on this podcast and I say, "What's up, Khalil?" Uh, Hello. Hold on, peep it. Look, <laughs> look, look. When I get a bucket, uh, I must be on. I head to Seattle. Uh, All my boys say, "Come on, come on." <laughs> 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 It's just like that. That never happened. Cut that out. You always go side to side. You don't ever go up or down. I know. I used to go up and down in Seattle. Then I said, nah, it's too predictable. So I said, I'm going to start going northwest. I heard you. Like, not here, just here. So it's like, you can't. So I got to do this? Yeah, you got to be here, here, here. Now, here, here. here. now this don't count for this. Oh, he's adding extra stuff. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to start doing this. <laughs> you need to go left. But, um, yeah. How'd that sound? Was that? Do I have a future in this rap rap business? Oh, you need a little work. Off the dome. This 16 off the cuff. I mm-hmm. don't even write nothing off the dribble. Huh? I bite some, but I'm vegan, so I nibble. Hello. That's all I got. That's all you got? That's all, <laughs> That's all you need sometimes. Just loop it. I can make, I can make a song off that Trio, we could loop that audio. Nibble, 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 uh, nibble, 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 uh, uh, nibble, nibble. That's a crazy like ad lib beat. Come on, you know what I mean? Can I get two bars from you? <sighs> two bars. It could, it could be from the music. It could be from your songs. Man, might as well. I don't freestyle. That's what I'm saying. It could be, it be from your songs. But I'm here right now. Oh shit, he on, he on, he on, he on, he on. <laughs> I, I, hear, I hear him. I hear him. Listen, what I say. Here, I'll, uh, get, I'll get something from the song. Okay, okay. Res- the respect, respect. Let me see. Which one? Uh. Mm. We're, getting a, we're getting a backyard podcast exclusive. All right, let me see. A little bazzy. Talk to him. What I said, I said. Why do I sound so, like, I sound so seductual when I talk like this? I sound kind of crazy. You, you are now watching another episode of Backyard Podcast. Uh-huh. <laughs> I said... What I say, I don't even remember what I be saying. Uh, but what I said, I said, look, talk to him. I be feeling like my life's almost upon a time. I said, mm. this new era, let a cap. 
but I am who I am. Mm-hmm. And if you've been through what I've been through, then you probably have a chance. Mm. She should have fell in love with me and not the glitz and the glam. Because mm. when it all falls down, them 10 toes is how you stand. Mm. I try to tell you I'm the man, baby. Mm. 100,000 in my arms reach. She had to double back because I'm a man. I practice what I preach. Mm. Smooth talking nigga, game sweeter than a Georgia peach. And plus I'm from Seattle, so the South End is what I bleed. Mm. Never gang banging, I got ties in every city streets. Loyal to the soil and as healthy as I'll ever be. Mm. As he took a life's worth of L's breathing healthily. Bless the fuck up. Tell me who can you compare to me? Mm. A thousand on the buckets, nigga. You can check the registry. All my nigga scholars and they pass when niggas testing me. It really with the violence, but it seemed like a nursery. Ooh, they testing me. The n- Come on, man. Them bars went over. I don't, I don't think they caught a lot of them bars just now. Come on. Sweet like a Georgia peach. Come on. Come on. Ah. And I look. <laughs> oh, you thought. Oh. Look, yeah. Come on. <laughs> yeah. You thought. Oh, he went up this time. Oh. I should have knew it was coming. We just talked about it. Now. I kind of went before you. That way? Yeah. Ah. <laughs> what, what is that? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Scissors and is paper? It, it's, not, it's, what not, is that? it's not paper? What's going on it, here? It's not paper right now. That is a pair of scissors. That is a thumb. Like, I'm like, ah. That is a pair of scissors from Run Staples. Run it back. <laughs> Southeast? What was that? <laughs> it was like at the. It was, it, was, it was late. We go. Oh, yeah, you got it. Ah, 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 ah. Damn. Too late. Damn. Got him. Respect. Got, you got that on camera, right? We... Respect. I mean, I'm on this camera too. How about that? Damn Don't worry. Me. We'll delete it later. It never Shit, happened. Damn near. I'm deleting the first. I'm deleting my first rap bar. Ass. <laughs> 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 but, um,. I kind of want to pick your brain a little bit. Yo, talk to me. No, I think you're ready for this. Talk Fear to what's me. time. Uh oh. <sighs> for the riddles. Oh yeah. I can get down with some riddles. Yeah, no, I'm about to, I'm about to, I'm about to make you. I'm about to f you up. I can get down with some riddles. Um, <clears throat> are you ready? Talk to me. Some months have eight letters. Some have five. How many have three? Can you repeat that one more time? Some months have eight letters. Some have five. How many have three? Some months have eight letters. Mm -hmm. Some months have five. Yes. How many have three? Yes. Mm. Is it 13? What in the fuck? 13 months? Wait 13? A, you're only 12 months in a year. I know. Wait a, wait a minute. Maybe there's an extra month that we don't know about. Black History Month? That's 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 February. I know, but we got to add extra days because that's the shortest month. Wait a minute. So there's an extra month. Ladies and gentlemen, we just heard it here for us. We, we, we have a 13-month year. Um, I'll, I'll repeat the question one more time. There are... A um wow um um wow, I forgot the question because I just can't believe the answer I heard. Some months have eight letters. Mm-hmm. Some months have five letters. Mm-hmm. How many months have three? Thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> no 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 uh, hell no! All right, I got you. I got you. I got you. Let me see. Let me see. I don't know how many. They all do. They all have three letters. All, what? all the months? All months have three letters in them. At least three letters. But you didn't say at least. No, but literally, that's the question. Look, some months have eight letters in their name, whereas others have five. How many have three? They all have three. Oh. 13 is crazy. Got his ass. You know, when I said 13, I was adding up eight and five. I can't believe it. Because you said some months. So I'm thinking some ad. Mm, he's he, he's thinking intellectually. I'm not mad at that. Right, how about this? What gets wet as you dry? Pause. Pause for sure. What gets wet as it's drying? A towel. Oh, he's there. Okay, he's okay. One, one for two. <clears throat> okay. I mean, it's, it's, it's bring heavy hitters out. How about that? 
Three. <laughs> <laughs> What weighs more? 10 pounds of brick. They're the same. Okay. Okay. How many letters are in the alphabet? 26. How many letters are in the alphabet? Is it 26? 26. Final answer. M's the 13th letter. Look in the camera. And say your final answer. How many letters are in the alphabet? Yep. How many letters are in alphabet or how many letters are in the alphabet? How many letters are in the alphabet? 26. Got them. Eight. I emphasize alphabet if you didn't notice that. How many letters are in the alphabet? It's eight. A L P H A B E T. Ooh, I'm a freaking. I'm a, I, but I he said s- the alphabet. No, but I said how many letters are in the alphabet? But you said the alphabet. I said the, and then I, the alphabet's emphasized. How many letters are in the alphabet? You so if I it. say, how many people are in the car? Well, we're, we're not in the car right now. How many letters are in the car? Three. But you wouldn't say the car. You would say how many letters are in no, the but word it's, car. It's, 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 it's a mind trick game, so I'm emphasizing the actual word I want you to, to, to count the letters in. I said how many letters are in the alphabet? But you said the. Yeah. So it doesn't but work. In the alphabet. So if I said if I said the word alphabet, you would know. Okay, eight. You so if you wrote this on a piece of paper, mm-hmm. I would emphasize all caps alphabet. But they're gonna be like twenty six. Yeah, but how many letters are in the alphabet? Okay. I don't think that works. It it, it works one for three. That um, one doesn't work. That one wasn't good. What is the answer to this question? You tell me. I'm asking you. What is it? I don't know. I don't know either. What is the answer to this question? Answers what? That was a good one. You got me. The last one was weak. No, nah, nah, it definitely wasn't. Weak. I got you. Got you on that that one. one doesn't count. All right. All right. Okay. There's a bag of eight oranges. Mm. Are you emphasizing the word orange? Yep. Okay. You take two. Mm. How many do you have? There's a bag of eight oranges. Yep. And I take two. Yep. I have two. Trio, we we have yeah. to get better questions. We, we everybody's been cooking us on these on these freaking questions right now, and it's it's making me sick. Um, okay, it's, it's really not fun to get it right. Okay, if a rooster lays an egg on a roof, mm-hmm. which way does it fall? If a rooster lays an egg on a roof, which way does it fall? Do roosters lay eggs? Is that change? I don't know. If a rooster lays an egg mm-hmm. on a roof, mm-hmm. which way does it fall? Well, it depends on the roof. Never second guess yourself, champ. They don't lay eggs. So what's a rooster? Um, it, uh, it's it's an animal. So I'm saying, but like, is it a chicken? Um, I, th- I think a rooster is a rooster. So how did it get here? Like, do roos- roosters get pregnant? Yeah, but I don't know if they lay eggs though. So who was f- here first, the chicken or the egg? Do roosters lay eggs? That was my riddle. Roosters are mature male chicken. Which do not have the capability to lay eggs. Oh, also the difference between a rooster and chicken. Kind of, you kind of got got it right. Um, uh, yeah, but he said, "Is it a chicken?" He kind of got got that. Yeah, he fucked me up on that one. So like point five, I get like point five on that. You get like point three. Point three. You know what? I'll get you. What's your what's your jersey number? Zero. <laughs> 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 he fell for it. Um. Okay, you know I'm I'm gonna walk out. I'm gonna walk out on top on that one. Um, he went two for no three for like. Wait, you didn't answer mine though. What was your question? Who was here first, the chicken or the egg? It's impossible because the chicken has to become an egg to become a chicken, but then the egg can't become a chicken if the chicken is like the egg. God. So you just dropped the chicken.
so if, if you're saying what what was here first, the chicken or the egg, the chicken lays the egg, right? But then the chicken be was once the egg. So God just dropped the chicken. The pan. The pan came before the chicken. The pan. You say what comes the first chicken or the egg? It's the, it's the pan. That's your question. You put the pan before the chicken because you got to put the chicken on the pan. I put it in a pot because I bake fried chicken. So I can put the grease in it. I'm vegan. I make fried tofu and a fried mushroom oyster to be exact. Why did the chicken cross the road? To get to the other side. No, because it had three black people chasing it. I had had enough of this foolery. I'm gonna cut this out the loop, right? Out the loop. I'm gonna cut this out. Um, can't even talk. How about this? Check. How about them apples? It's two plus two. Four. Incorrect. What is two plus two? Four. Incorrect. What is two plus two? Four. I'm gonna tell you why you're wrong. Biologically, I feel that's the right word. Two plus two can never equal four. Why is that? Because I never said equal. So what is two plus two? Twenty-two. God is nice. Well, actually, he said, "What is two plus two? If anything, is just a sentence or a question." So what's the answer to that question? There is no answer. Every question doesn't have an answer. It's so. God is ass again. You're not even, you're not even here when I'm picking it up and putting it down because I'm putting it up, picking it up so quick you ain't keeping it. Sweet. What'd you pick up? I picked up a good habit. Know what it is? Anybody know? You can drop habits too. I picked up a bad habit. Trick question. What's the answer? That you're not good at riddles. You know what? He might. He might. He might be right. You know. Hey. Uh. Okay. Okay. If if I'm not good at riddles, the answer to this question. What do you do at a green light? What do you do at a green light? Yep. Am I in a car? Yep. Am I driving? Drive. Nope. What do you do at a green light? Well, there's not a specific thing that you would do at a green light. Oh, there's a special specific thing you do at a green light. It's the, only, it's the only thing you can do. You can do a lot of things at a green light. What do you do at a green light? I've seen videos on Twitter. There's a green light. There's a whole bunch of females on a car twerking. But they weren't going anywhere. So there's a lot of things you can do at a green light. Um. So... I seen this homeless dude frying an egg on the sidewalk. There's a green light. It's hella hot outside. Um, the homeless dude. So the homeless dude then, which makes sense because back then they didn't have houses. Um, so they had caves. Um, um so how'd you get um? From D two to uh, USF, <laughs> <laughs> I, I got I got two I got two more two more uh, questions for you. So uh, that's one of them. How'd you get from USF from the D two university? Um, this is a serious question. Serious question. Okay, can't tell. Yeah, it might be. I don't know. Um, just playing basketball. That's a good answer. No, I'm not on, on, on all seriousness though. How'd you how how's that how'd you get from that D two level to the USF? Like what was the process? Um so I had a pretty good year at uh Central Washington. Mm. Um so initially I wasn't supposed to I wasn't even supposed to play that year. Mm. Um they told me I was gonna wear a shirt. I need to get stronger, better, whatever they said. Um then we had a scrimmage against Monterey Bay. Um okay. did pretty good. And then uh, our very first game of the year, I came off the bench and had 28. So then it was like, yeah, you're going to start for the rest of the year. I was yeah, like, yeah. I bet. So, um, and I wasn't even on a full scholarship at Central Washington. Damn. It was like 75, 80%. So we still had to take out loans. Um, and then, yeah, 
did good. Got freshman of the year, uh, honorable mention. Should have made first team, but um, honorable mention. Uh, yeah, just had a pretty good year, and then entered the portal. Um, my coaches got fired. Uh, the day after playoffs, like we played playoffs like a Friday, and then like we got back Monday, and our coaches were fired. Mm. So um, after that, I was just like, yeah, it might be, it might be time for me to just get out of here. You know, I always wanted to play D one. I always knew I was good enough. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I just had to. I guess I had to go down there to show coaches that I was good enough. Yeah. Um. So yeah, into the portal, and I got some calls like from other JUCOs, other D twos, but not a lot of D ones were calling. Um, I guess for the same reasons in high school, height, um, athleticism, whatever. Mm. Uh, so then, like, last minute, I got a call from Cal Baptist, and um, they are offering me a scholarship. I went on a visit. It was cool. It wasn't, it wasn't too bad. I was thinking about going there. Mm. Um, then they uh, called me one night and was like, look, if you want to come here, you got to commit right now. And I was like, what? Like, what, uh, BAP? BAP, yeah. Oh, yeah, wow. I was like, what? Why well, got to commit right now? Like, It was like, if you really want to be here, then you shouldn't have to think about nothing. Like, you should want to commit right now. I was like, listen, bro, like, I got to like talk to my family. I got to talk to people who help me get to this position. Nice. Like, I got to make sure I'm making the right decision. Like, It's not just about me, blah, 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 blah. And he was like, oh, well, that's the answer we needed. I guess we could talk tomorrow. I was like, all right. So then later that night, I go to sleep and wake up in the morning, and they did the same thing to another player. from. He's from Federal Way, which is like, uh, 30 minutes from Seattle. Mm-hmm. He did the same thing to him, but he had folded, committed. Damn. So then he was a guard just like me. So I was like, that's why they were calling me, like trying to press me to commit on a, on a dime. So then um, that offer, they still had the offer there, but I didn't want to go there. I was like, that's shady. Like, Yeah, facts. You know I mean? um, and if you're doing that now, I can only imagine what you're going to do when I'm there. So then that fell through the hole. Then I'm like, damn, like I got to go juke or whatever. Like, I'm starting to, you know, get back to these coaches. Like, I've always got back to every coach, respected them, because, you know, you never know when you need somebody. Facts. And just because, you know, my mom always taught me to be respectful. But I started, like, really entertaining it and really, you know, telling these guys that I'm thinking about going to their schools and stuff. And then USF called me. Um, like, last minute, bro, we start school in August. I swear they called me, like, beginning of July. Wow. So they called me and they're like, wow. yo, whoop, whoop, whoop. we seen you. We just lost a player, Sule. So okay. Sule was at USF, but okay. he ended up leaving. So if he never left, I would never be here. That's a blessing. I mean, I mean, blessing, not like be disrespectful to him not being there, but that's a blessing for you. No, for sure. Literally. Literally. So um, yeah, they called me up, bro. It was, it was quick, quick. So they called me up on like a Tuesday. I get on my visit by Thursday. Uh, my visit's like fucking 36 hours. Wow. Like, I didn't get like the full, like, experience yeah or whatever yeah um i get out here i go to meetings i work out uh then the next morning i'm on the next flight hella quick bro so that's then, crazy um yeah shit was wild so then i get back and i'm waiting for them to tell me that i got the offer uh they call me like a few days later and they're like look we want you blah blah blah, blah. it's good money so i'm like bet and i'm like i don't want to like jump the gun and like commit to these guys but then it's like school's about to start so i gotta mm-hmm. like make a decision Call him up, commit, get out here August 22nd, and start my rest year. Wow. Just like that. Just like that, bro. And that's the start of your D1 journey. Yep. That is amazing. Wow. Everybody's dream is always to play D1. And I always tell them, man, go where you're wanted. Just go where you're wanted. Facts. Because if you want to get to D1, you might have to go through a D2, any IA, D3, whatever the case may be. If you if you got talent, they'll find you. Don't look at it as, like, don't. I went D2. People knock it. I'm like, oh. I know a lot of guys in D2 right now that will give anybody work. But what? Work. And Cal Bapp was in our conference. So I got to play against Cal Bapp uh, uh, once a year, every year. And like I said, our, our conference was number one, number two in the nation every year in terms of rankings. Yeah, exactly. we, we always had three or four top 25 ranked teams in our conference. And like I said, D2 is 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 a dogfight every night, man. Like I said, pe- people knock it. I'm like you. You can't knock it unless you play for it. You, no, you don't. You don't know the difference. It's it's really not too much different from D one. It really, honestly, it's the money. Like a lot of these D two schools don't have a lot of money, and to to get the talent, but they're still getting good players for who sure. weren't in the D one's eyes in a way. So it kind of just comes back tenfold. But yeah, man, this um this conversation is, was amazing, bro. Uh, yeah, Trio, where we at? 
damn, I feel like I was in there for yeah. three hours. Yeah. Damn. Um, <laughs> and then another thing I wanted to ask you uh, before we kind of end it off, um, I need to know, who's your favorite player of all time? LeBron James. No question. Straight to it. I didn't got to think about it. Jody. Bad. Bad. We'll cut it out. We'll cut that shit out. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. I'll tell you that right now. But yeah, no, Bron James, I mean, like, like I said, I don't I don't get into the GOAT debate, but I'm I'm a huge Bron guy. I am a Bron guy. To through and through, and it 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 warms my heart to hear you say that. Yeah, bro, I've been with Brian since all three, bro. Come on, man. Same Vince, same Mary, straight to the league. Come on, Come on now. Shh. Like what? Are, what are we? What? Are, what are we? What are we talking about here? And he's about to lead the league in points. He only needs to average sixteen points a game I've this year. That. That's it. He he could do that in one quarter. Come on. Literally. Literally one quarter. Literally. No, no, never mind. I'm not going to, I'm not going to say no one's better right now. Still, at age, at age, I mean, year twenty. No, no, no. That's a fact. Wait, he, he, this is year twenty-one coming up. Now it's year twenty. 20 year twenty. Damn, yep. and he's still that good. Yeah, because he's oh three. Yep. Wow. So I'm twenty-three. I'll say this: there's not, there's probably two humans on this world, on this planet, that can like perform at that type of level and just at that age, and that's Bron and Brady. Preaching facts right now. I want you to say it again and lock in. Because what Brady's what, 42, 43? 43. Seven rings. There's two humans on planet Earth that could perform at the professional level, at the highest level, the most elite level, consistently. And that is LeBron James, the Los Angeles Lakers. The kid in the arena, the man in the arena, just a kid from Akron. And then there's Tom Brady, New England Patriot legend, now Tampa Bay Buccaneer uh, quarterback. Two people. Look, I ain't had to say it. Two goats. So he said all I need to hear. Two of the goats. Damn it. Put some respect on their name. Now. Say that one more time. Are you ready for this question? Yeah, I'm, I think I'm ready. Are you ready for this question? I think I'm ready. Okay. Khalil. Yo. From Seattle. Yeah. All right. Played at Rainer Beach. Yes, sir. Central Washington. Yep. Now plays at USF. Yep. Played in March Madness. Yep. Makes his own music. Yep. Has his own clothing brand. Yep. Has his clothing brand logo tatted on his leg. Facts. Got swag. Yes. Has confidence. For sure. African American. Absolutely. Waves in your hair. Couple. Tatted. Reason why I named those off. Left one thing off on there. Can anybody guess what he what he what he left off? Huh? Can you can anybody guess what he left off? I can't guess it. You ain't guessing? The main other question is, all right, is can Khalil with the tat, with the eye, with the, with the name brand, with the with the uh, makes music, with the waves, with the um, 
one resume, D two resume, with the high school resume, state championships, and that Khalil for the best guard, the backyard legend. Can I guard you? Yeah, absolutely. I love it. I love it. That's all I need to hear. You'll never see the one v one because you know why I'm retired. I just need to get that question out of there. <laughs> yeah, I, just to, I just need to get his answer. Out. All that to say that, no, I'll just give you a hard time, man. But uh, no, I, I really, honestly appreciate you. Going to the backyard podcast, man. Um, mind you guys, he he drove two hours to come out here today, and to knock this thing out. Um, yes, sir. I feel like we learned a lot of knowledge from you. We got a lot of stories. A lot of people out there can relate. You know, one thing I I I love about doing this is, you know, you might one of your stories or things you're saying might catch a kid's eye who's going through the same thing, For and sure. it might help them get through a tough time or get through a situation where you know they're not getting highly recruited, or you know they're a super underdog and they just feel like I have a sense of quitting and giving up. But seeing this or hearing this may literally change their life. Thanks. And I appreciate you for opening up and being vulnerable and um, entrusting me with the conversation. And, yeah, man, uh, last thing I want you to do is just lock in on your camera right here. Yes, sir. And give any words of advice to anybody aspiring to be a D2 athlete, D1 athlete, and to be the best that, to be, to be the best that they can be. To do to to get to that level, for sure. Yeah, man. It's just man, chase your dreams, man. You know, there's gonna be a lot of people in your life who tell you you can't do some, or you know, a lot of people who don't believe in what you're trying to do. But it's your life at the end of the day. You know, granted, you do need people to get to certain places in your life, um, but those people will come if you know that what you're doing is truly what you want to do. And there's been millions of times where, you know, I find myself in my dorm or or in my room, or whatever the case may be, like, ready to quit basketball, mm -hmm. music, whatever. There's been a lot of tough times, a lot of, you know, times where you're questioning what you what you want to do, but, you know, at the end of the day, if you really love it, you'll come back to it, you know, and you'll keep it pushing and keep it going. So um, there's nothing wrong with having, you know, divots or having downtime, but just make sure you're not stuck there for too long. Just keep it pushing. Make sure you surround yourself with great people, genuine people yeah. who want to see you win and, you know, they're not hating on you or they're not having you go down the wrong path or whatever yeah. the case may be. But, yeah, man, at the end of the day, just live your life, man. Make sure you're having fun because it's, it's, it can end at any time. It can go any day. So just make sure, you know, you're doing this life thing the way you want to do it and in the right light. That's all I got to say. Man, wise words. Very, very, very good words for people out there, man. I just want to elaborate one more time on what you said is don't take life for granted, you guys. Um Tomorrow's not promised. I know it's such a cliche saying, but what he's saying is, is from what I picked up and what you're saying is that no matter the situation, life can never be too good, never be too bad. Always got to remain even kill because everyone's going to have their up days and down days. If you let your up days take you too high, your down days going to be really low. Exactly. So no matter what, even on your trophies and your championships, still remain level-headed because there's still more work to be done in this thing we call life. And I appreciate you, brother. Man, this is amazing. For sure. appreciate you too, um, my dog. Yeah, man. You know, I, th I think... I'm excited to see your journey and to see you keep prospering. And I can't wait to go watch you and Ty play yeah. at USF. And it's going to be dope, you know, if if you would allow me to have you as a guest again a couple of years from now just to see the journey. Absolutely, bro. Okay, I was, I was making sure, man, you bro, know. You know we locked in. Come on. Um, but, yeah, bro, I just want to give you your flowers and, and say you, you're doing a damn good job, man. Appreciate it. You um, too, bro. Appreciate your you, my guy. Too, bro. Appreciate you, man. And mind you, me and me and Khalil only met each other one time in Seattle, but we hung out for, what, well, I was out there for three or four days? Yeah, I think we hung out a couple of the days. I think, like, I think like two of the, I think the last two or the last three, maybe yeah. the last two for sure. We got, yeah. got to work out with him. Bro got game for real, for real. If you don't know, watch some damn film. And, um, yeah, man, uh, if you guys are watching on YouTube, make sure you like, share, subscribe. And if you're listening on the audio platforms, that follow button. This has been the Backyard Podcast. I'm your host, Marcellus Howard. This is Khalil. Lil Bazzy. And uh, we only end it one way and one way only. So on three, we are going to say you dig. Bet. Anything else you want to say before we do, though? No, we good. Good? Good. Okay. On three. One, two, three. You, you dig. dig.